his grandson of right thought. Welcome to the School of Marvelous Light, Lil Flop. This year represents the ending of a cycle and the beginning of a new. Y'all hear that little flock? The ending of a cycle and the beginning of another. This ending of a cycle is the ending of a troublous, tumultuous time. In the lives of the first fruit chosen ones of Yahusha. A transition out of an old lifestyle into a new one. Our example would be Yahusha when he chose, handpicked his apostles. And he would go to them and like John and James, Peter and those fishermen, he would go to them and say, follow me. And they would leave their nets and follow him. Leave their nets is a very compound statement. In other words, it doesn't just mean they just dropped their nets and started walking. Their nets represent their old life. Their old idea of sustenance. The thing that they had faith in to give them the thing that they desired, which was their daily bread. You understand that today, little flock? Leaving their old trust for a new, a new lifestyle. And so it is today. So as in it, one of those chosen ones, I'm going to tell you about the last seven years so that those who are entering into their seven years will be prepared and be ready. And this what's happening today is that part in the scripture where it says, and he shall show you of things to come. Speaking of the spirit of truth, he shall show you of things to come. So he's going to tell you of things that are going to approach in your life. And when you see them happen, then you will know that it was the truth that told you that. See, that it wasn't no lie because everybody's focused on what's to come in the future. Everybody would like to know. There are voters and people voting and passing legislation. And in other words, doing things to impact the next years of their life. You see, things that they place their trust in. <laughs> you see? But the truth has to tell the people in order for them to be prepared correctly, right? In other words, if someone tells you of the future, but yet they lied about it, then you might prepare wrong. So let's say, like Joseph, it's about seven years, guys. See, just like it is today, the rainbow man is going to always tell you about the time to come. That's where you know where the spirit is. The rainbow man is where the spirit is. I say the rainbow man. Joseph wore a coat of many colors that represents him being the spiritual man in the reflection of the father, whose image is the image of a rainbow. If you read the prophets, you know that. So that's why Joseph has a coat on in the image of the father. So, so it is today, you see? So he's gonna tell you about these seven years. Joseph said there would be seven years of plenty and then seven years of lack. So the whole nation heard that and responded. You see that there? And prepared. And many were saved because they listened to what he said would happen. And so it is today, little flock. If you listen today, then you'll be prepared. Now, that famine that Joseph went through was a famine of bread and of water. In other words, food. So that's what he spent the seven years storing up. So that when the seven years of lack came, he could feed them. Do you understand? Now let's see what God has done with the branch here today and see if it coincides. Seven years ago, I was called out into the 40 day fast in the wilderness. The spirit drew me out. Do you see that today, little flock? Seven years ago, it happened. 
See, not just any random number. Do y'all see what I'm saying to you today? Seven years ago this happened, and then seven years from that going in the 40, here I am saying to you, now I'm going to tell you guys of the things that are going to come over the next seven years of your life. <laughs> you see how this is going, little flock? It's not hard. You know, it's not hard. So, the next seven years. Well, when you're called out, you have a dilemma to make. You have a, a dilemma. You have a rock and a hard place that you're in between. Just like if you were a fisherman and he came and said, leave your net and come follow me. You're going to have a dilemma for a moment. You're going to say, well, wait a minute. Well, how am I going to eat? How am I going to drink? How am I going to clothe myself? How am I going to live? Wouldn't you say that if somebody came to your job where you were sitting and said, hey, come follow me? Wouldn't that be the thoughts that would come to your mind? <clears throat> but what am I going to do for a living? Now, if those aren't the thoughts that come to your mind, why does Yahushua say these things? Take no thought of which you should eat or drink. See how they're coming into a new way of living out of by sight into by faith. You understand that? That's a troublous time for a man. Do you understand, little flock? The transition from one to another is a troublous time. It is a tumultuous time in his life where things are flipped upside down. Because living by faith is the true way to live. live walking by sight is the false way to live. So that proves that if you were walk, or trusting in your net, you understand what I'm saying? That you were walking by sight in what you could see. So then you were living the false life. So then the things associated with your false life must disappear when you accept the true life. You understand that today, little flock? Like the matrix with the red pill and the blue pill. Do you understand today? You understand it? You got a choice to make. Am I going to accept the truth? Or am I going to go back to the lie, back to the comforts of living a lie, just like the children of Israel in Egypt? It's no different. It's the same thing. So if he's extending his hand the second time to deliver his children from the places where they are scattered, which he said that he is, then it will be no different today than it was the last time he extended his hand to it to save his children. It will be the same because he changes not. So you come out of that old way of living, which is by sight. And then you start to wonder, how am I going to eat? How am I going to live? Now, take the grandson as your example. I told you seven years ago, I was in the 40. Well, a month from now will mark seven years because I went into the 40. July 16th was the first day of me going into the 40 days. July 16th. So it's June now. So about a month from now, it'll be seven years. You understand that today, little flock? So we're coming up on that time now. Well, for those for these seven years, I have not worked. This is what I'm trying to explain to you, little flock. I have not worked. Now, previous to that being caught out in the 40, I did work. I worked for General Motors, GM Motor Company. That's who I worked for. When he called me out, he said, leave the line <laughs> and come follow me. And so I did. And then he took me out into the wilderness for 40 days. You see? To teach me the new way to live. You understand that today? Now, of course, once you understand the new way to live, it doesn't mean that you're perfect in it yet. That's why the seven years is trouble to you. It's trouble to you because there will be many days where, where you will wake up with no idea of how you will eat that day. Today was one of those days for me. You see that today, little flop? I'm currently doing it. I told you. It's one of those days for me. So you will wake up many days with no idea of what you will eat or how you will even get anything to eat. The old life tells you what? Oh my God, what am I going to do? I need to go work. I need to go get some money, at least get a day job or something. What are men going to tell you to do? To go get a job. But Yahushua pulled you away from there. 
because he's telling you the new way. Take no thought of what you shall eat or drink. You see how it's connected like Lego's little flock? He didn't say random things. He said things that hit right on the questions that you'll have once you're pulled out. Those are the questions you're going to have. I can tell you from personal experience, that's what you're going to have. How will I eat? <laughs> How will I drink? How will I clothe myself? The exact things that he said, don't take any thought for. Don't think about that anymore. That's the old life. That's the old way of living. The Gentiles seek after all these things. See how you were once a Gentile, like the scripture says you were? <laughs> you were once a Gentile, just going along, chasing after material things like everybody else. And you thought it was good. You thought it was a righteous thing to do. You see that little flock? But you were in error. And so you had to be taught a new. And that new is walking by faith. So when you wake up and you don't have anything to eat, what is the natural inclination you're going to have? Panic. These are the things he wants to root up out of you. So he has to expose that they're in there and why they're in there. So if you wake up and don't have anything to eat and you panic, then that proves that you don't listen to Christ. Now, what does the scripture say about the spirit of truth when he comes? He shall reprove the world of their sin. And what is the world's sin? What have I been saying on my last couple of videos? That you won't just listen to Yahusha. Now see what it says about the spirit of truth. He shall correct the world of sin because they believe not on me. Yahusha said that. So that's the world's sin today. That they don't believe Yahusha. I told you guys that. That's what I've been fighting for these last seven years. You guys don't believe what Christ told us. You're proving that you don't. You see? Because you panic when you don't have anything to eat. That proved you don't listen to Christ. But you think you listen to Christ because you sang a song about Jesus? You went to a building and, and, and listened to a preacher preach about Jesus? You put some money in a collection plate? So now you think that you're his, but yet you don't do what he tells you to do? Which means if you don't have any food and you panic about that, then you're not listening to his word that says, take no thought. But the man who does not panic proves that he listens to who? Yahusha. Because why would a man not panic over those things? What to eat? Where is he going to sleep? What is he going to have? What is he going to wear? Why would a man not panic about those things other than because Yahusha told him not to? His natural being is going to. So if he doesn't, then the only reason he doesn't is because he's not listening to a natural. He's listening to a spiritual. He's not listening to the fleshly mind. He's listening to the spiritual mind where there's life and peace. Where I am exists, and I am has all good things. The scripture says that. So now I am fed. That's the new man. But it takes tribulation to get to this point where you're strong like that, which means you had to see it manifest in your life. That's what the seven years is about. So what looks to be terrible actually works out for your good. So I said all that to prepare you for what seems to be terrible. What seems to be tribulation, what seems to be terror. You see that today? It has to do that to see if you have anything in you. That's that's not that's contrary to what Christ taught. You see what I mean? Oh, I follow Yahusha. I follow him. Okay, now how do we prove this? Job. Have you considered Job a perfect man, a shoeth evil, upright? Well, he only does that because you bless him. Okay, we'll take everything away from him and see if he curses you. Do you understand that taking everything away from him, what that means to a human being? They get panicky. They get afraid. But the Bible says Job did not. He didn't curse God. But he said, blessed be his name. Lodge, that direction. Yep, yep, no problem. So y'all see that today? It's going to prove who you listen to, but how you respond to a hard circumstance. Not an easy one, guys. So the tribulation is a hard circumstance, but it's hard so that it can prove who are his. This is how he sifts the his from the tares, the wheat from the tares. This is how he does the sifting. Trouble is how. Who listens to me? Let me take the food away. Now, there are some saying I am fed because there isn't any food with their eyes, but they don't walk with their eyes. Those are the ones I like. That's how I manifested them. Can you hear it today, little flock? So, so it is with me. Who I was all along was manifested by what I did when things got hard. 
You understand that today? Now, when it gets hard, brothers, it won't always be easy to do the thing that I'm talking about because you get anchored down to this reality and you become carnally minded. That is a reminder that you're carnally minded. And there will come times, brothers, when you get carnally minded, where you will just want to sit it for a minute and you won't fight to get out of it in that moment. You just sit in it for a moment. That's OK. That's OK. It's just like a fighter who's in a fight who gets knocked down. It's not good that he rushed right back up sometimes. He gets knocked down, but he's so embarrassed he got knocked. He jumps right back up, but his legs are gone. He's not together all the way yet, but he's panicked because he's been knocked down. He's embarrassed and he's afraid. But the one who's calm gets knocked down and says, okay, I'm going to stay down here until eight. Then I'll get up. That way my body can recover. I can get the most seconds that I can to recover without having to stand up and put myself at risk. Getting up at two just to prove I can get up. Then he says, fight. And the guy knocks me out because I'm not together yet. Let me just wait to eight, six, seven, eight. You okay? Mm -hmm. Show me your gloves. Walk toward me. Go back to the corner. Fight. Okay, now, I'm, now, now I got a little bit more together now. I could defend myself a little bit better now. You see that today? You see? So sometimes you just have to sit down and calm down. Relax when you get knocked down. And then when you got yourself together, then get back up and get back into the fight again. You see? And so that's what's going to happen to you in your life when you transition out, brothers. You're choosing the truth over the lie. And that won't happen for you until you ask Abba for it. You have to hate the old life you've been living. That's why you're saved out of it. Because you're telling him every day how much you hate it. Even if you don't say it with your mouth. Because Abba doesn't hear words you say with your mouth. Rather, he hears the groanings of your spirit. So our spirit helps us, helps us when we pray in our infirmity. Our infirmity is not being able to articulate what we truly want and how we truly feel to Abba. That's our infirmity. So the spirit helps us articulate what we feel with groanings that cannot be uttered. That's what the Bible says. So you're groaning. What do you call groaning? Say like you work a job that you hate. Do you groan before you go in? That's what Abba hears. That's the same thing he heard when the Israelites were in Egypt and they cried out for their hard labor. How do you cry out for hard labor? <sighs> oh my goodness gracious, I can't stand doing this shit. Hate this shit, man. God, Lee, I wish there was another way I could live. That's groaning. There is another way. There is, but it's going to cost you the old. That's what I keep telling you guys every day. You have to let go of the old in order to receive the new. Y'all think that you can marry a man. Somebody presents you with a new husband. You're going to marry the new husband and still be married to your old husband. That's what you guys think is happening here. And it's not because it doesn't work that way. You are a spouse to Christ. That means that he's now your husband, which means that you now listen to him. But the world still is, is listening to other people and then say, I, I follow Christ. You can't. You cannot serve two masters, nigga. So who is yours? Now, you will all admit that Christ is the truth, correct? Well, if he is the truth, then what will it take for you to dwell with him, to be where he is, to come into truth? And when you come into truth, it is vastly different than the old world that you were living in. When you woke up and your refrigerator was full because you went to work and you paid your bills and you uh, paid your car note and you did paid and paid and paid and paid and thought, wow, I have some security as long as you're working, you have some security. What, what happens when you get tired and you need a Shabbat from the work? Then you can no longer pay. And that's what forces your ass to work. See, that's what makes you groan. I need a break. I need a vacation. I need a rest. Why do people have vacation if it's not about having a rest? Why do people go on vacation if they don't need a rest? Why are there resorts? Why are there spas? If that isn't a part of our life, that we need to rest. We need to Shabbat every now and again. Well, the Shabbat is the seventh. That's Shabbat, the word. It means seven. <laughs> See that there today? Seven. So things work in cycles of seven. Abba told us this. You work six days, seven days you rest. 
and then you work six days and seven day you rest. So it's not difficult. It's not hard to understand the cycles that he works in. Well, it's like I said with Joseph, the same thing with us. But like I told you earlier, it was a it was bread and wine. In other words, water, food and water that they were lacking in Joseph's day. Abba already told you what's going to be lacking at the end days. He said, not of bread and water, but of hearing the words. That's what they're going to lack. That's what they're going to be starving for. Hearing the word of God. Because nobody stacked up the riches during the seven years. Like I'm telling you guys, if I went out there on the 40 and been, if pre and been preaching since I went out there and you guys hear me preaching. So then you know that I must have really truly went because you know that you can see the anointing and you can feel the anointing. Well, that means that there's been plenty. See, plenty being said to you guys out of that mouth or else you couldn't be learning anything. And there has been plenty here. It doesn't matter if it's not a lot of views or not a lot, a lot of clicks. The information is plentiful here at the School of Marvelous Light. Plentiful. So that's seven years. But that's coming to an end now, like I told you guys. And when that happens, people are going to panic as to what to do. When the money fails, when the jobs fail, when he turned humanity away from the lie is what I'm saying. Because that's what he did for me. He took me away from the lie. And when he took me away, I did panic because I was living the old life of fear. Oh, my God, my wife, my kids. He removed those things. And I mourned sore over it. You see, little flock, mourned sore. It was greatly distressed over it. How is this any different than what Abraham suffered? When Abba told him, you would have a child of promise, you would have your son. But he thought to lay with Hagar and have the child because he thought that's what Abba meant. And then what happened with Hagar and Ishmael eventually? They were kicked out and it greatly distressed Abraham. He was wounded by it. Yep, same thing with the grandson of right thought. When I married that woman and had those children and had that family, I thought that was eternal. In other words, I thought it was permanent. But that was my family and that's the way it was for the rest of my life. I see that it wasn't. So then was it true? But do you think it's easy to turn away from the wife that you say you love and the children that you bore? Do you think it's easy? Do you think it feels good? Do you think it's pleasant? No, it greatly distresses you, just like it greatly distressed Abraham. You see? And just like it greatly distressed me. So I'm describing it for you, brother, so that you know, so when the great distress comes to you, you will be able to bear it, knowing it before it happened, because that's what preparation is. It's knowing a thing before it occur. So I've been saying it and I've been saying it. I will continue to say it. If you're not living in truth, then everything that you have will be taken from you. Whether it's your child, I'm a witness of it. <laughs> That's how much it will hurt you. What does the scripture says? The mourning of an only son. That's a very difficult, hurtful thing to get through is what God is saying. And I had to go through it and still continue to. That pain of building something in vanity, building it in vain. And that's why God said, don't. Now I'm proving to you that God said, don't do that because it will hurt you. Why do you tell your children not to do the things they do? Child be on the bed playing and they're on the bed. The bed's kind of high and you're sitting there and the child starts moseying his way over to the edge of the bed. And you're like, no, <laughs> don't go that way. And he just keeps going, keeps going. You pull him away from the edge. You pull him back to the center of the bed. You're like, stop going over there. Don't go to the edge. Stay here. <laughs> and then he crawls back over there to the edge again, to the edge again. To the edge. He's almost about to fall. You grab him again. Come on, man. Now, why are you doing all of this? Come on, stop, sit down. Why are you doing that? To protect your child from harm. So then Abba do the same thing for you. Hey, stop, sit down. Don't do that. But you go and you do it anyway, and then you suffer when you fall and hit your noggin. Ah! And the baby will cry until daddy or mommy comes to pick the baby up to comfort them from their fall. <sighs> so it is with Abba. So it is with Abba. When you see, when you fall off the edge and you see that what he was trying to keep you from, 
was this feeling you're experiencing right now? Then you turn to him and you confess and say, Father, I understand. I understand now. I get it now why you were telling me no. Why you blocked me from that woman and I still went after her anyway. You showed me the red flag. That's what red flags are. There wouldn't be a need for red flag if there wasn't somebody who loved you who was putting the red flags there, guys. Abba love you. And he put the red flags to keep you away from it, but you want it too bad and you go after it. It's always been that way. And so the more you dig into that life or the more diligent you are about building it, the more you it will hurt when it goes away. Because it is. Because it is, guys. That's what I'm here to tell you of the things that are to come. A famine. And for, and for the elect, it's because you're, you're transitioning into the new. We're not worried about the terrors right now. We're talking about the elect and how this affects them. The main harvest. Because the first fruits aren't a lot, guys. First fruit is just a few. They're just testers. When you go to a tree and say it has apples on it, the apples are not ripe yet. You can look at it and tell. But yet there are about two or three that are already ripe. Those are the first fruit. You say, wait a minute, there's some already ripe. And then you taste them. Wow, they're sweet. They're done. They're ready. That's the first fruit. So he's gone through the process of being plucked off of the stem, the old life, and being consumed and eaten and become part of a new creation or a spouse to Christ, that is, the one who's eating the fruit. See that there, little flock? Well, that process is the same thing with you. You're snatched out. And then you're consumed or you become one with Christ. Eat my flesh and blood. Drink my blood. You see? And become one with me. That's what you have to do. But that takes a process of growth. And so through these losses, brother, which are what I'm preparing you guys for, are these perceived losses. It's always standing on the truth is what's going to get you through it. Otherwise, it'll kill you. It'll kill you. It'll eat at you and eat at you and eat at you trying to convince you that it's the truth when it's not when it's not for instance if it's your children if you have children and you are snatched away from them because of this transition into truth and they happen to still have to remain in the world of lies for a time then you will be distressed fighting for that lie to remain not knowing it's a lie to be let go just like the children of Israel do with the law of Moses when Yahushua came to bring us the new they can't let go of the old one. They can't. <laughs> I'm proving it to you guys by saying what I'm saying right now about this. They cannot let go of the old children for the new children that God has truly planned for them, which is their Isaac. They'll never have Isaac if they don't let Ishmael go because they're not, they're not going to inherit, to inherit the same things because they don't have the same mother. Can you hear it today? So I'm going to give you guys an example. If I married a woman who was a bond woman, and had children with her. And then I separated from, from her and went on to some other location and met another woman who was a free woman and had children with her. Will the children be raised in the same environments? Will the children have access to the same amenities and things of that nature? No. Will they have, it, will they have access to the same education? No. You see what I'm trying to explain to you? The free woman going to have a very different inheritance for that child that you bore with her versus the slave woman who cannot help but bear slaves. Hagar gendereth to bondage. See that there, little flock? See it? So no, they can't inherit the same thing. So you would have to let one go. For the other, just like Abraham did, and you will be distressed. But when you hang on to the truth of it, well, Abba said, this is a promise. That was never a promise. That was something I did on my own will. Yahushua said, not mine own will. So then I proved I was error when I went on my own will. And all of you brothers did, or else you wouldn't have been existing in Babylon. She did. <laughs> Y'all went on your own will, which you thought was good until Abba revealed to you the truth. This is the true way of living. Faith is. So what are you, so you're saying, Abba, that I have to wait until the thing that I have asked you for comes to me? That's what I'm saying to you. Isn't that easy and light to do? Well, yeah, that's free living. That's like room service. 
or a waiter coming to me to serve me at my table. Uh, so that's why it's called a waiter. Because it represents the high life. Patiently waiting for the thing that you know you're going to have. You wait for it. The old life is about working to get it yourself. Slaves have to work to get it themselves. And they only get peanuts. But a free man does not have to work to get it himself. He makes his request known and he waits. Now, what did Yahushua tell us to do? Make your request known. Boldly do it. Now, why did he say boldly? Because Mount Sinai gendereth, which is Hagar, gendereth to bondage. So what happened out Mount what happened at Mount Sinai when the children of Israel first met their God? They were afraid, it says. They could not stay there. They said, no, run away from this damn mountain. It's scary. You see what I mean? So then how can I say come boldly? Because when you're not going to Sinai, you're going to Zion. You're going to the Mount Zion now. Sarah, who is the free woman. Who you just come up boldly and say, Mama, I want this. She says, have it. Well, let's see. Ask believing and you shall have it. Is that not what Yahushua said about the free, the free mother? That's what she'll do for you? Ask anything believing and you shall have it. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you should say this and it'll happen. He's making it so easy that it seems fake to people, to the faithless. It seems too good to be true. Make my request known and it will manifest to me. That's what you're saying. Hell no, nah, man. Hard work, hard work, hard work. Did you know that that was a curse? It ain't no damn curse. It's a blessing. Hard work is a blessing. Okay, read God's word. By the sweat of your brow, what? So how come when he first put him in the garden, he didn't mention no sweat of no brow? It wasn't until he went astray and was kicked out of the garden. That's when the sweat and the brow and shit came and the hard labor came, didn't it? So that would be a curse, wouldn't it? If it's if it's a blessing, then how come people that free people that are living in affluence don't work? But he make all the money. You got you got a business. The CEO don't do none of that shit. None of that work that the niggas on the assembly line is doing. But the assembly line nigga that doing all the hard ass work ain't getting no money. But the CEO getting all the money. Is this true or is it not true? See? You all are in two worlds, aren't you? Yeah. So if you're transitioning out of the slave world into the world of the free, they're going to take some pain. And that's what I'm telling you guys right now today. It's going to take a little bit of pain. It's going to take some suffering. Because I'm sure if you suffer with me, that part came first, then you shall reign with me. So you got to learn. Okay, so I had this and now it's taken away. I want to fight to hold on to it. I'm scared. Oh, my, I'm embarrassed. I'm ashamed because I lost this thing. I lost this. I don't have any strength in my hand to fix it. I, I, I nothing I can do. What, 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 what? Huh? See? You see? And that's when the truth comes in. Take no thought of what you should eat or drink or put on even. So if I'm not supposed to take any thought of my life, he says, then why am I? One of two reasons, either you're not his or you're still learning how to get to that point. Now, how are you going to learn how to get to the point where you believe faithfully on what he told you unless you have tested it? How can you get to that point unless you have had to see it work? And the only way you can see it work is go to where it works. Do you all hear that line right there? The only way you can see it work is to go to where the working is happening. And where is the working happening? In the hardship and in the suffering. In other words, if I said, turn the other cheek if somebody slaps you, and somebody says, nigga, you a hypocrite, you wouldn't do that shit, how would I prove to him that I would? I'd have to suffer it. See what I'm saying to you, little flocculators. You see, that's how you prove it. That's how you show it, is by suffering it. So, so show you. Now, as you go and you transition through these phases of learning how to walk by faith and not by sight, you're going to be carried through different locations to meet different people, to ultimately minister to them or to aid them in some way, shape or form. You will be tested when you go there. 
And that's why Yahushua said, if they don't accept you there, dust your feet off when you leave. So he knows that there will be places he's going to send you to. And he'll send you two by two. See, there's one who's with me, who I call the witness, who has been with me on this seven year journey because he sends you out two by two. So I call that person the witness because they've witnessed the whole seven year journey. You see, from living under a bridge to living from place to place with strangers that I have never known before, to just living on the street, to, to uh, living in a, what do you call that thing? Um, homeless, uh, a campground, whatever you want to call it. People put up the little tarps and shit, being around there. Not knowing what you're going to do on a daily basis, just like he told you not to. So now you're in an environment, when my, in my case, where I had went down to, first of all, well, let me start from the beginning real quick. We got a little bit of time. After the 40, I came out of the 40 and saw the witness. And the witness was like, wow, wow, wow. Yeah, I saw you before you went in and I'm seeing you after. And wow, you see? That was 2017. After that, when I healed up from being in the 40 and got back strong and everything again, Abba sent me and the witness to Atlanta, Georgia. So through a series of events, we end up in Atlanta, Georgia. And we stay there with a r random woman and her children that I did not know. Then we left there and went to another woman's house who I didn't know. Stayed there for a while. Then we left there. When I said left there, I meant kicked out. We were kicked out of the first place. The second place we were kicked out of. And then the third place, we stayed there for a while and then had to leave there and go to Tennessee. So let's talk about Georgia real quick, brothers. When I left and got down there, I met this woman and her children. We ended up staying there with her. She asked me one day, I always see you reading. I always see you sitting off to yourself. What is your religion? Like, what do you believe? I said, love. And she got offended by that. I don't know why, but she did. And shortly after, we were told to leave. But before we were told to leave, guys, I mean, we were told to leave and I went to another location. Now, when I was told to leave and I went to another location, <laughs> we ended up staying with this woman, very kind woman, a flight attendant, <laughs> very kind, loving, generous woman. She had just bought a new house. She was not staying in at the time because her father had just passed away. And so she was basically staying with her mother to comfort her mother and take care of her from the loss of her father, her, who was her mother's husband. So she wasn't staying in her house. She said, you guys can live in my house. <laughs> To you know, you figure out what you're going to do. We ended up staying there for a couple months. Didn't ask me for any money. Didn't charge me anything. Didn't ask me for anything. And when it came time to leave, okay, guys. So we ended up going to Tennessee. Now, this whole time, well, there's just so many details and so many things that I have to tell. It'll be kind of difficult to list it all in great detail, but I'll try my best here. Before we went to Tennessee, we had a car. It was three people. It was me, the witness, another lady, and her children. So more than three people, but three adults. Me and two adult women. And we went and went to a hotel to stay there for one night. And the car we were driving, we had just got there. The car we were driving got repoed. So all of our belongings were in the car. And I mean all of them. So that means my suitcase with my clothes and all my everything in it is now gone. Car got repoed. So do you see what I mean about take no thought of what you shall wear? Now, remember when Yahushua sent them out, he said, don't take any extra stuff when you go. Well, I took a suitcase and then the suitcase got took. Now, do you see what I mean about the truth versus your feelings? The truth said, don't take anything extra when I send you out. But I did because I wasn't aware that that was what was happening at that time. Not truly, not fully. I'm still learning, like I told you guys. So I could have said, oh, my God, all my clothes, all my things. Oh, man, I'm gone. The car we came here, everything's been gone, man. 
but I didn't because I knew the truth. Don't take anything extra with you. Did you? Yes. Who's the one that said don't take the extra stuff? Yahusha. <laughs> All right, then. So do you see why it's gone? I do. I ain't mad about it. I understand. But you can't understand if you don't know his word. So my advice is to know his word <laughs> during the seven years of plenty that I'm because I'm giving you guys this word in great clarity. Stack it up. Stack up his words so that you know what to say when the hard time come. See that little flop? I see this is going to have to be a several part message. This ain't going to do it all in this message. There's too many details coming to my mind of things that I would have to share with you guys. You see? But like I said, I stayed there and then I had to leave and go to Tennessee. And when I got to Tennessee, remember the cars in repo, we have no car. I told you guys a story about how I got the car while I was in Tennessee. There was a car sitting there, a lady had it, it wasn't running. She said, I've been trying to get people to fix it and work on it and they can't get it fixed. But if you can get it fixed, you can look at it if you want to. If you can get it fixed, you can have it. Okay, I went and looked at it and got it fixed and so I had it. So now we have a car back. So I don't wanna ask you guys a question here. Okay, and then we're gonna end this message and then I'll make some more parts and we'll continue with this. But I wanna ask you guys a question. The car got repoed, so we're carless. But now I just told you that we got a car. Now, did I have to spend any money to get it? I told you what the woman said to me. All that happened was this. I, we went over there to see this woman. And when we went over there, I happened to see that car in the driveway. And I said, well, it's a nice car. I said, it, I could tell it had been sitting. I said, it's just sitting there. I said, well, it doesn't run. And she said, no, it had some problems a couple years ago, about 2015. It had some problems at this time. It's about 2018. It was having some problems. So it's just been sitting. I got another, I got a new car now. So it just sits. I had to have some guys come look. They couldn't get it fixed. I said, well, can I take a look? She said, yeah. And if you can get it started, you can have it. It's just sitting there. <laughs> well, got it started and I took it. See what I'm saying to you, little flock? But I have to spend any money. That I have to go to work to get a car. So do you see how he's teaching me the new way to do it? Do you see how he's teaching me the new way to obtain it? Because now I, when I was driving away, he's saying to me, are you in a car? I am in a car. Yeah, I do have a car. You see? But at that moment when it looked like it was repo, those are the moments that I'm telling you about, little flock, when your faith has to increase, not fear. Oh, we're out of a car. Oh, man, no, I'm carless. See how you curse God's name when you say that? Well, now you are. But if you maintain your faith, you're back sitting right back in a car again. And you didn't have to spend any money to get it, did you? No, I didn't. And there are many, many, many stories like I told you guys. But like I said, this was getting kind of long. But I just wanted to t let you guys know that this time is coming for the main harvest. This time I'm describing to you of me popping and going from location to location and not knowing where I'm going to eat, not knowing what I'm going to wear and sleeping under a bridge and being kicked out of places and people looking at me with hate, not trying to don't want to help me and don't want to support me and being mean and hateful, closing doors in my face and everything. That's what's happening to the main harvest, because that's what happens to the first fruits. You see, and that time is this year. So it's a lot of people going to be shocked. They're going to be shocked by what they see. Like the scripture says, men's hearts shall fail them because they, things are going to happen to them when they're not going to be able to change it. I told you the truth is here now. Your truth that you prayed for is now here. Did you ask for truth? Well, yeah, I did. I did. Well, then here it is with everything that comes along with it and all the old got to go away. He made that clear when he was talking about the wine skins, guys. New wine can't go into a wine skin. Faith can't go into a person who walks by sight, can it? In other words, the teaching of faith, which is what I teach you guys about thoughts and feelings and how to put them together to make babies. Babies are experiences that you want, you see? <laughs> a person who walks by sight cannot hear that, you understand? It's foolishness to him. So you're telling me you got a car without spending any money at all. The woman just gave it to you. Well, she told me if I could fix it, I could have it, which means I did have to do some work. 
I just had to fix the car. That was the work I did. You see? But yes, she told me I could have it. Now that came from a simple idea. Now this is before I end this message, I wanna make sure you guys know this. That came from the man and the woman coming together and having a child, that car. That opportunity for me to get that car, you see? Okay, they came and repoed the car. Okay, I'm in a new one. I have another one. That's what I, that's what I am. I'm chilling. Got me another car, it can't take nothing from me. <laughs> yeah. If you have that attitude that you already have the substitute for what they so-called took, then it will come. But if you only focus on what was taken, then you're proving that you thought that that was real. No, it was the lie. That's why it was taken. Oh, boy. Can y'all hear this message today? I know it's quite a bit of information, y'all. And I honestly didn't think it would be this long. But I knew it was a lot of information. And I guess, well, I won't say I guess. But it seems as if Abba does it this way for those who diligently want it. If you diligently want the thing, then you'll listen to the end of the matter to understand how to get the thing you diligently search, searching for. You understand? In other words, you'll put the work in if you really want the result. But if you don't want the result, you won't put the work in. So like it is with this, you won't listen to all these messages to glean anything from them if you don't think you'll need it. <laughs> you see? If you don't think it's going to benefit you or it won't give you any gain, then you won't put the work in. That's like saying, I'm going to, make you go to the gym and work out every day, but you're not going to see any results. Well, then why are you making me stay here all day and do all this work if I'm not going to gain anything? I know, it's pointless, right? It's called laboring in vain. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Hey, doggy. Hey. Hey, hey. So y'all see that today? Laboring in vain, the Bible calls it. So which one do you think is laboring in vain? Walking by sight or walking by faith? Which one do you think? But which one has the world been doing for the most part? Walking by faith or walking by sight? So then when what they see changes, what will happen to their hearts? Fail them for fear of what they see coming on the earth. But the ones who walk by faith don't see what's coming on the earth because they don't walk by sight. Isn't it easy to understand? You see something, your mind interprets what it is. Well, that may not be true. But when you're walking in the truth, your mind will truly interpret what you have seen. That car that got repoed got repoed because there was a note being paid on it. Now, let me ask a question here, grandson. That car that you fixed when the woman just gave it to you, did you have to pay a car note on it once you were just driving it around after the fact when it was running perfectly fine after you fixed it? Did you have to pay a note on that car? Well, no, I didn't. So then you actually got a benefit and a help because the car ran perfectly fine. The benefit was you don't have a note, which means you don't have no one coming to repo the thing, do you? Nope. So you got something better. That's the truth. But you can't see that when all you see is the car being repoed. Y'all hear what I'm saying, little fly? So, so it is with your children. So it is with your wife. What do you mean, so it is? Repo. When your wife get repo, repossessed, because you didn't never possess her, you were just loaning her. With everything else that you had in the in the lie life, <laughs> when the lie life you were living, you were just you were just renting them. You were paying a note, and when you could no longer pay the note, it got repossessed. So in other words, whatever it is that you give that woman that you're with, or that man that you're with before you're called out. Whatever you're giving them to keep them to keep them staying, once you live in truth, you no longer give that anymore. And then they go. They get repossessed. Because you can't afford the payments anymore. You want to argue all day. I don't argue. I'll discuss it with you, but I'm not going to argue and scream and hoop and holler and fight. That's the old me. I don't do that anymore. Well, that's the way I stayed. That was the payment to keep me. I'm not willing to pay that anymore. Well, then bye. Repossessed. Well, repossess? Who possessed you, woman? Well, if she ain't yours, if she was a lie, that tells you who possessed her. Told you about the dream I had with my ex-wife. I told you all about that. <laughs> so, 
When the repossession happens, what do people do? They run after it and try to stop it from happening. And what does that cause? More problems. Doesn't help you. So neither does it help you when you try to run back and grab back the things that I was going to snatch out of your lives. I know that, like I said, money makes you guys feel safe and secure. But y'all have to know that eventually it's not going to work. It's not going to do the same thing it used to do. Does it? Yes, it does. Okay, well, when you were a kid, you went to the store and you bought a bag of chips, a pop, a damn bag, or a thing of Twinkies and a fucking every damn thing, candy and shit, and you spent $5, right? Okay, now go to the store and try to do that same thing today. You're going to spend $25. So then you're a liar. It doesn't do the same thing it used to do. That's where that phrase, bang for your buck, came from. It doesn't have the same bang for your buck as it used to, does it? My grandmother said gas was 25 cents when she was a child. 25 cents a gallon. Have you ever seen gas cost 25 cents a gallon? So then it's changed. And it hasn't changed for the better because I guarantee you, you would all want your gas to be 25 cents, wouldn't you? Right then. All right then. So it will fall. And when it falls, the things that it gave you will go get repossessed. Can't pay the bill. Time to repossess the furniture, the house, the cars. Can't pay your mortgage. Give me the house. And that what happens? You don't own it. You're like, that's mine. They're like, you don't own it. The bank owns it. So it got repossessed because you didn't own it. So why you call it yours? Because it's a lie. I'm proving it all to you guys right now. Credit is a lie. It's all a lie. You have people living in houses that they have not paid off, but yet they say it's their house. It's not. The bank will remind you if you don't make your payments, that is not yours. Same thing with your car. You see what I mean, little flock? Do you see what I mean? So I'm proving to you there are two worlds going on here. Proving it to you. And when you're brought into the new, they're going to repossess the old. And will you run after it, chase and cry? Will you? Give you guys an example. 2016, when my wife divorced me, you see how 2016, my wife divorced me, kids go, the house goes, everything goes away, the job goes, and then 2017, I'm in the 40s. <laughs> so 2016, when my wife did these things, my ex-wife left and was repossessed, you see? Now, when this happened, let me see, what was the point I was going to make with saying this, guys? Bring it back to my memory real quick, Abba. When it came time to be repossessed, that was my point. What was I saying? Oh, when it came time to be repossessed, guess what she says to you guys? Now, it wasn't no big fuss over material things because, like I said, I was losing everything anyway. So, really, wasn't nothing I had to give. I didn't have anything. Everything was gone. So, I had a car at that time, though. You see? And she says to me, well... Since it's me and the kids are over here and you're over there just by yourself, that car should just, you should just give it to me. Since I got the kids, I'm going to be taking them back and forth doing this and that. You should just give me the car. Okay, here you go. And I did. I said, here you go. I bought it. I paid for it. I worked for it. She had never worked the job. So I worked and paid for it and did all that. And I eventually gave it to her. That was the end of it. So do you see what I'm saying, little flock? About repossession? I could have fought it. Hell no, you're not taking this. You took everything else. You're not taking that from me. Whatever, have it. And that's how you have to be with the old because that's part of the old, isn't it? All right, then. That's how you have to be with the old. Go ahead, have it. Take it. Because I know the truth of it. I'm getting something better in return. I'm getting my Isaac in return. I'm getting my double portion in return because I know the end of Job and the end of a thing is better than the beginning thereof. See, little flop. So like I said, We'll just be talking and talking and talking and talking and talking. But we'll split it up to make it easier to pick apart when it comes time for y'all to get this information. So y'all be blessed today. Hopefully that was edifying to the brotherhood. And we got more to come. Silla wa